Okay, we're going to have a look at our strap connectors. Um, so these little fellas. Now, because this is black and I know you can't see that very well, I've decided I'm going to do a bright purple one. I'm not actually going to use it on the back, but I'm just going to make one um, in purple because you'll be able to see what I'm doing, I think, better. So I've cut one of my strap connectors out using the template from the pattern. Um, depending on which bag you're making, you're going to need either four of these or two of them. So two for the smaller, four for the larger bag. Um, and I have a piece of uh, faux leather that matches that is a bit bigger. I mean, you can make these kind of out of scraps almost. Now, I've had a bit of an epiphany. Um, I couldn't find the ribbon when I was making um, the last one. And I suddenly thought, what have I done with my ribbon? I don't know. I couldn't find my ribbon anywhere. I put it in a safe place and I still can't find it. So what can I use instead? Now, um, I know some people like to use waterproof canvas or cordura. Um, as the strips inside of their um, connectors just to give them a bit of strength. I discovered or suddenly realised that these are the things that we're given all the time at the local supermarkets and we're not given where to buy them. They're the sort of heavy duty plastic shopping bags. Now, I don't know if other countries give out those sort of things. I know in America they have paper bags, they have brown paper bags. We don't get given paper bags for anything here, I don't think. Um, but this stuff cut into strips is really thin and really strong and works just as well as ribbon. So if you've got um, a supermarket bag, cut it into strips and just keep it for this sort of thing. I mean, you can cut it into half inch strips. It doesn't even have to be particularly accurately cut. It's just about something that's nice and thin and really strong. Um, and I'm using that instead of ribbon and it really works. It's easy to sew through. It's got no thickness at all, so you're not adding any bulk to your strap connector. Um, if you haven't got a Sainsbury's bag or a Tesco's bag, then please do feel free to use the ribbon, which is what which works just as well. I just cannot find what I've done with mine. So I've used a bit of glue stick to stick those pieces on, and you can see they are actually nowhere near the sides, so they're not gonna, I'm not gonna be stitching through them at this point. I've added a little bit of extra glue, and I'm gonna put my strap connector wrong sides together onto that spare piece of um, faux leather, that extra piece of faux leather. And now what I'm gonna do, uh, where's my awl? Oh, I put it down somewhere. Well, that's very strange. I had it a second ago. I'll use my pencil instead. Is I'm going to stitch from this top edge, this top corner, down the side of the strap connector to about an eighth of an inch below this curve and then I'm going to do one stitch that comes out towards this curve so we'll have a, a line of straight stitching and then an angled stitch. I'm going to leave long threads at the ends. I, I, I don't mind, um, I do a back stitch at the beginning but a long thread, at the, a long thread top and bottom at the end um, to, that I can then pull through to the wrong side. So I'm just going to Again, we're doing this at an eighth of an inch away from the side of our strap connector. So I've done one stitch going out, one threads left. I'll just do the other side and I'll pull the threads through and then I'll show you. So at the beginning at the top there, I'm back stitching one stitch just to secure my stitching. That won't show, so that's fine. Threads from the front back into the last hole you made through to the back. We can trim off those threads at the top because we did do that back stitch just to secure the stitching. Take those two threads 
and tie them off as you've seen me do lots of times now. Um, this is something that anybody that's been with my with me for a while knows that I do all the time. It's actually a quilting technique, but it just finishes things off really nicely. I hate to see back stitching all over the place. Um, it, it, it looks untidy, and if you're working in faux leather or cork, it can um, weaken the, the seams because you're going through making more holes than you really need to. So tying off is a, just a tidier way of finishing your stitching and it's secure, so all is good. So I've tied them off, trimmed off those ends down to, well, they're a bit more than a quarter inch actually. I'm just gonna use my, oops, gonna use my glue stick just in the middle there and bring those ends into the middle will be inside of your strap connector so nobody's going to see that so you can see I've just secured the the ends sort of in the middle there and then I'm going to without getting glue all over my fingers which is what I normally do and actually probably what I'm going to do now I'm going to trim all the way around the outside of the one that we've already cut to shape. Again, I'm keeping my blades of my scissors at 90 degrees to the, to the panel so I don't get a sort of a mitered cut side, a mitered sort of edge on the side of these connectors. Now, this faux leather, unlike my faux that I'm using for my connectors uh, for on my bag, actually has a white side. So you can either use edge paint or you can, um, if you wanted to colour in the sides, you can use a Sharpie pen um, or leather edge paint. Or if you have any um, waterproof ink pads. So if you're a, a multi-crafter, a multiple crafter, and you perhaps do stamping and inking, if you have any of the uh, uh, archival waterproof ink pads, you can kind of run these along those and they will colour the edges. I'm not doing that very particularly carefully, but you can see there that the white edge from there has disappeared. And I'm using black, so that would show. Um, but if you had a, a purple Sharpie, which I don't actually happen to have on me or close by, you can cover those edges um, in purple Sharpie. So it matches or whatever colour your, your faux leather is. Um, you choose a, a different colour or a, the right colour. You can use edge paint, a leather edge paint, which you'd need to use a foundation with. Um, so there's information about leather edge painting. Um, I'll, I'll pop up a video for you. Um, but yeah, that's how you make the basic connector. The rest of the stitching around our connector we'll do as we apply it to our bag. So that's our basic connector. And I think you can probably see, I hope you can see, that the stitching comes down from the top and then just comes out slightly. Just where we get to that sort of point where the, the curve starts, we just move and do one stitch out towards the, the wider part of the connector. And we do that on both sides bring the threads through to the back and tie off. Okay, we're gonna fit our strap connectors now. Now, I'm doing the bigger bag. The measurements are different from the, for the smaller bag. Um, I've done a line, marked a line from the top part of my exterior panel. Um, I've marked a line that's three inches from the top and then two more lines that are two inches in from either side. If you're doing the smaller bag, you need to mark a line that is two inches from the top and then lines that are one and a quarter inches in from either side. Um, I think you can probably see that. It's difficult because it's quite reflective, this faux leather. So I'm going to take my strap connector and here's my black strap connector because that's what I'm using on this bag. And I'm going to pop it, pop it in the junction, the bottom corner, so the, the, the narrow end, is going to sit in the junction of that two inch line and that three inch mark and the threads that I pulled through are showing so they're on the top here so this is the wrong side of my connector and that's exactly how it should be you should be able to see those so making sure that that bottom corner there is right in that apex of those two lines I'm going to then take that across to my machine 
and I'm going to stitch across the bottom of the connector using a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now I'm back stitching one stitch at the beginning and one stitch at the end. And I'm only stitching on the connector itself. I'm not stitching over and off the end of the connector. I'm now going to do a second line of stitching that is quarter of an inch away from the edge of that connector. So I'll have two lines of stitching holding my connector in place. Now, if you're making the smaller bag, you're only going to be putting one on each uh, panel. So you're going to be putting, if you're right-handed, you want to put the left-hand one on each panel. So you'll have, um, I'm not sure what I did with my other panel, here it is. So you'll end up with two panels, one with a, each with a connector on the left-hand side. If you're left-handed, you want your connectors to be on the right hand side because we've got opposed straps we need the connectors to be the right side for your um for where you'd wear a bag on your hip um so moving them over to the to the other side if you're left-handed will work and make the bag sit properly however we're not doing that one we're doing um the bigger bag where we actually have both strap connectors so i'm going to do exactly the same thing with the second with the second strap connector on here fitting it into that junction of that little um, cross where I've done the two lines meeting um, and I've got a size 16 needle in the machine now because we're going through quite a lot more layers um, essentially I've got three layers of faux leather and a layer of foam here. So I'm just going up a little bit because I don't really want my stitching to fail because these are strap connectors and they're essential. So you really want them to be fabulous. Um, right, let's find my hardware. Which ones am I going to use, I wonder? Um, I think those will be the top. They all look the same, but they're not. Some of them are slightly heavier than others. Um, some of them have got a curve in them. Um, but these are the ones I like. So now we have our two strap connectors and they're attached to our exterior nice and securely we're going to add our hardware. Now, obviously this end bit's up wider than one inch, so we have to kind of fold it in half, thread our hardware on until it's in place. Actually, that's gonna have to come off again because this hardware has a slight curve to it. So I actually need the curve to be going it the wrong way around again. What am I doing? That's it. Oh, having a moment. Okay, so we now have our hardware. Let's try that one again, shall we? So I want my hardware to be like that. So I'm going to thread that through. That's better. Um, so we now have our hardware on our strap connectors. Our strap connectors are reinforced with that heavy duty plastic. Um, so what we're going to do is we'll put the strap connector so that it's touching that uh, quarter inch, uh, the uh, hardware rather, so it's touching that quarter inch line and fold the other half of that connector down over the line. Now, if you wanted to put a um, zipper foot on, you could do. You can do this with a zipper foot or you can do this with an ordinary foot. It really depends on, I actually am gonna put my zipper foot on, I think, because I think it would be easier. So, oh, that one's no good, that one's broken, so. Let's try 
it's just I've only got this one that goes this way so I don't know if that's going to actually work okay for me I think it probably will and I'm going to stitch across the strap connector just below where the hardware is so I'm going as close as I can to where the hardware is I'm going to do I'm going to leave I haven't got long threads have I? I'm going to leave long threads at the beginning and the end so that I can take them through and tie them off so let's just do that again sorry I'm waffling here so my hardware is touching that second quarter inch line I'm pushing the, the strap connector down over the hardware and I'm going to stitch as close to the hardware as I possibly can just to secure my hardware in place and I'm going to leave long threads at the beginning and the end going right the way across raising my needle do the same with the other one I might as well do them both at the same time so pushing the long threads I'm going as close as I can to my hardware raising the needle and you kind of know where we're going at this point because we've been doing this all the way along I'm just going to take that through to the back of our work and we'll tie those threads off and we do that for both connectors or the single connector depends which bag you're making so other than those few simple changes everything else is exactly the same so let's tie these off now because I've got uh, pairs of threads either side I can actually just take them and tie them in the middle it's not going to be a major issue on the back of here just make sure that you put your strap connectors at the top of your bag and not at the bottom Otherwise, you're going to have a really nice stiff bottom and a floppy top um, because your decoville will be at the wrong end of your bag. So there we have two strap connectors almost completed. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start at that point. Let's um, show you on the purple one. So we're going to start at, oh, out of shot, at this point here where you had your stitching we're going to go across we're going to go all the way down and round leaving a long thread at the beginning and the end so that we can tie our threads off Nice and slowly, you want this to look good. If you feel you want to add a rivet or something like that, then you could do that.
and again taking our thread ends from the front to the back oops and tying off and there we have our strap connector all beautifully connected and I'm going to do exactly the same with the other one Sorry, I get a bit quiet when I'm stitching these. I'm a little bit concerned that I just fall off the edge um, because it is quite close to the edge. Okay. I hope everybody's with me so far. It's not as difficult as you think. I promise. Um we're going to move on next to adding our piping. So if you've decided you're not doing piping, now's a great time to go and grab yourself a cup of coffee um, and a biscuit and sit back and watch the fun because you're, you're bound to want to do it another time. So it's always worth watching. So there we have, um, well, on this I have two connectors. Um, if you're doing the smaller bag, you'll only have one connector either on the left hand side or on the right hand side, depending on whether you're left or right handed. Both of your connectors will be on the same side. So if you're doing a bag with left handed ones, you'll have two connectors on the left side. If you're doing a right handed one, you'll have two connectors. Uh, sorry, the, if you're doing right handed, you'll have two connectors on the left hand side. If you're doing a right handed one, you'll do two connectors on the right hand side. If I'm a left handed one, you'll have two connectors on the right hand side. Talk about confuse myself. Um, but it's about having the connectors on the right side given your um, orientation, hand left or right. So I'm going to get on and I'm going to put the connectors on the other uh, panel and I'll come back to you and show you piping later. <laughs> 